Hi everyone, it's Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me. I am super excited to share the Handyman Pack by Some More Fun Stamps. Sabrina was kind enough to send it to me to play with and today I'll be sharing two fun fold cards, but let's talk about the kit first. In this kit, you will receive the Nailed It stamp set, the Handyman stamp set, three wood grain card bases, and these are 100 pound card bases that are really, really nice, and the wood grain is awesome. Three white card bases, six wood grain envelopes, which are so cool, five pieces of six by six designer card stock, and five three and a half by eight and a half pieces of designer card stock, which are perfect for slimline cards. There are only 30 handyman packs available. I'll make sure to link to it in the description box below for you. If the handyman pack does sell out, I'll also have the stamp sets listed separately because they are available as well. Moving on to the first card, we'll start with the pop-up slider card. And to create a pop-up slider card, you will need two pieces of cardstock that measure four and a quarter by five and a half. You'll need a piece of cardstock that measures three by four and three quarters. And then for the front of the card, you'll need a piece that measures two and three quarters by three and three eighths and three by three and five eighths. I'll have all of the measurements listed for you in the description box below for you, as well as the Copic markers that I used. I started out by stamping this image from the handyman set onto the piece of cardstock that measures two and three quarters by three and three eighths. I used Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I kept the coloring really very simple. I started with C5 and added that to the areas where it would be darkest. So up on that ruler type thing that looks like an upside down L up on the top right corner, I have no idea what it's called. I add that to the area that's closest to the desk, and then for the light that's above the desk, I added the C5 at the top of that. I added a little bit of C5 on the legs of the stool, and then I moved on to C3 and blended out the C5. After I was done with the C5, I came in with C1 and blended all of the cool gray markers together. For the pegboard in the background, I used E41. To color in the wood part of the desk, I started out with E34 and I just colored all of it with that color. I decided that I was going to do the shading after I got a base color down. After the E34, I came in with E37 to add in some shadows and darker areas and then I blended that out with E35.
After I was done coloring in all of the wood, I came in with E42 to add some shadows to the pegboard on the top of the desk. And then I used the same color to color in the area underneath the desktop, behind the swole, and where all of those cardboard boxes are. For the handle on the hammer, I used E35, and then I started out adding shadows in on the cardboard boxes with E35, and I blended that out with the E31. For the reds, I used R37, R27, R24, and R59. I used the R59 very sparingly, and I only used it on the seat part of the stool that's in front of the desk. And with that, I am going to go ahead and play some music for you while I finish up the coloring. And then I'll be back and share with you how to put this pop-up slider card together. Now that all of the coloring is done, we're going to start putting this bad boy together. You want to take one of the four and a quarter by five and a half pieces of cardstock. For mine, I chose the front of my card to be the patterned cardstock. With the four and a quarter inch side up at the top of your paper trimmer, you want to line it up at three and a half inches. Then you're going to move the blade down to three quarters of an inch and press down and cut down to four and three quarters of an inch. Then you're going to rotate the cardstock, line it up again at three and a half inches, move the blade to three quarters of an inch, and cut from three quarters of an inch down to four and three quarter inches. Then you're going to rotate cardstock so that the five and a half inch side is up at the top of your paper trimmer. You're going to line that up at four and three quarter inches, move your blade to three quarters of an inch. And then you're going to cut from three quarters of an inch to three and a half inches. You want to make sure that you only cut in between those first two cut lines. So what you end up with is a flap on the front of your card. 
Next, we're going to need to do a little bit of scoring. So you want to place your cardstock with the five and a half inch side at the top of your scoreboard. You want to make sure that the piece that's cut at the bottom is on the left. Then you're going to score between those two cut lines at one and a quarter inches, three inches, and then again at four and three quarter inches. That last score line actually connects those two cut lines that are going vertically on either side. When you fold on the score lines, the very bottom one should be a valley fold. The center score line should be a mountain fold and the top score line is going to be a valley fold. Next, you need to cut a notch up at the top of that front piece of cardstock. If you have a circle punch, you could certainly use that. I don't have a circle punch, so I used a circle die instead. I lined it up so that only a half of the circle would actually cut out of my cardstock, and I ran that through my die cutting machine. And then you have to cut a notch on the other piece of cardstock that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. All I did was I lined up my patterned piece that already had the half circle cut out of it on top of the gray piece of cardstock. Then I lined up the circle die to match the cut that's on the patterned cardstock, removed the patterned cardstock, taped the die in place with removable tape, and ran it through my die cut machine. That way I knew that my notches would line up perfectly. Next, you're going to add adhesive to the back side of your front panel. And you only want to put adhesive on that center piece below the very first score line. You're going to adhere the piece of cardstock that measures three by four and three quarters to the back side of the front of your card. You wanna try and get that piece centered as much as you can. And you wanna make sure that the bottom of that piece is lined up with the very bottom of the piece that is cut out. And you can see here sort of how the card is going to work once they pull on that center piece. It's going to make the front slide back and pop up. Next, you're going to add adhesive on the outer edges. And again, this is the back side of the front panel. I used 1 8th of an inch score tape on the back side here just to make sure that the adhesive didn't get too close to that gray panel. If the adhesive gets too close to that, it will impede the movement of the card. After I removed the release paper, I adhered the front panel to the back panel. And to do that, I found it easiest to stand it up on my work surface just to make sure that those two panels lined up perfectly. After I had the front panel adhered to the back panel, I had to test it to make sure that it was going to work okay. Then I used a pencil and lightly traced the notch up at the top so that I could stamp my sentiment. I used VersaFine ink to stamp the sentiment on the top panel, and I decided to add another sentiment on the bottom of the inside so that would be revealed when the tab is pulled up. But before I could stamp the sentiment on the inside, I needed to figure out how much space I had because I also wanted to add in a gift card. So I pulled up the panel as far as it would go, and then I kind of wiggled and jiggled to get my gift card underneath that panel just a tiny little bit to make sure that I would have enough room to stamp the sentiment. After I had stamped the sentiment, I added a little bit of removable adhesive on the back of the gift card, slid that back up underneath that top part of the panel there, pressed it into place, to finish up my card, I adhered the stamped panel onto a piece of red cardstock that measures three by three and five eighths. And then I adhered that to the front of my card. The trick is when you're adhering to the front of your card, you only wanna put adhesive in between the two bottom score lines. If you put it too low or too high, the card won't pop up correctly. And that finishes up my first card. Moving on to the second card, we will be creating a sidestep card. And to start out, you'll need a piece of eight and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock. I decided to use one of the wood grain card bases for this, so I didn't have to do one of the score lines. And I'll tell you more about that when we get there. Anyway, with the five and a half inch side up at the top of your paper trimmer, you want to line it up at three inches you're going to move the blade 
down to one inch and then you're going to cut from one inch all the way to six and a half inches. So you have a slit down the center there and one side of the card is going to be three inches and the other side is going to be two and a half inches. If you did not use a card base that was already folded, you do need to score at four and a quarter on the two and a half inch side. What I'm doing here is I'm scoring on the three inch side and I'm doing score lines at one inch, two inches, three and a quarter inches, four and a half inches, and then six and a half inches. When you're doing the scoring on this side, on the three inch side, make sure you only score to the cut line. You don't want to score all the way down. When you fold on the score lines, the first one will be a mountain fold. The second one will be a valley fold. The third one is going to be a mountain fold, then a valley fold. And the last one will be a mountain fold. And that is how you create the base of your card. I did use my bone folder to burnish the score lines on this section with the little steps on it just to make sure that they were burnished really very well. I cut a piece of the pegboard patterned paper down to two and three eighths by four and one eighths and I added a little bit of antique linen distress ink just to darken it up so it wasn't quite so bright white and then I decided to add some ink on the edges of the card base itself so for that I used vintage photo. After I was done adding ink to the card base, I adhered the pegboard piece of cardstock that measures two and three eighths by four and one eighths to the left hand, left hand side of the card. I colored a bunch of the tools from the Nailed It stamp set off camera just in the interest of time because this is already a pretty long video. And I had my scan and cut machine cut them out for me. I added a bunch of foam tape to the back of each of them and I just adhered them to the left side of the card. Now I admit this was a little bit tricky because the steps kept wanting to pop up. So to hold them down, I just put a pile of acrylic blocks on the right hand side so that I could get my images adhered in place where I wanted them. I decided to add some more of the pegboard patterned paper on the right hand side. So I cut two more strips. One is two and seven eighths by one and seven eighths for the very back panel on the right hand side. And then I cut a piece down to two and seven eighths by one and one and one eighth for the center step on the right hand side. I used my liquid glue to adhere those pieces in place just so that I would have a little bit of wiggle room to make sure that I got them centered just right. I stamped the sentiments using VersaFine Onyx Black ink onto white cardstock I trimmed those down into little sentiment strips and adhered them to a piece of red card stock and I left a pretty good border around it just to draw more attention to the sentiments. And then I used foam tape to adhere those to the front of the card. And that's it, that finishes up my second card. Don't forget that this handyman pack is available in limited quantity only, so head on over and grab yours right away. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, I'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.